In this video, I'm taking you inside my head and showing you what I think in a live online head-to-head -head matchup of Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody and I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they could possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just wanna encourage you right now to click the subscribe button at the bottom right -hand corner of your screen. It is completely free for you to be able to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date on all of the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. All right, guys, so in this video, what we're talking about is we are talking about how you can become the best offensive and defensive player that you could possibly be. So I'm breaking down my New York Jets offensive guide as well as my um, as well as my nickel 335 offensive guide. And so if you want to get either one of those, the exact offense and the exact defense that I'm running in this video will be linked in the description. I have guides on both and you can learn exactly how I like to run them. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is this idea of simplicity as I open up the game, one of the things that I'm going to be trying to focus in on and one of the things I'm really trying to be intentional about is calling plays with a purpose, right? Calling plays with a purpose. So I want to simplify what I call so that I can maximize my effectiveness. And so the way that I'm going to be doing that is you're going to see that I'm going to run about five, maybe six plays at the most. Um, I'm going to run the, the, the play flood. Um, that's my power play. That's the play that I must make go. That is the play that I will make go. And that is the play that I will run again and again and again at my opponent. Um, my second play is my counter play. And that's going to be the play Jets dig, uh, which you saw me throw that in the audibles um, down below. Okay, so that is, that's my second play, and that's my counter play. That's, you know, whenever I start to notice a trend, whenever I start to notice that they are, you know, maybe giving Flood a little bit of issue with the way that they're doing their adjustments, then that is the perfect time for me to be able to shift into the play Jets dig. The third play and the third component of any effective offense is a constraint theory. And so I actually have two constraint theory plays that I'm going to be utilizing um, in this in this offense. And, you know, again, that's why I say maybe six. I don't normally actually ever end up shifting to it. Um, but uh, as you see right there, a nice little dot on the play flood. But um, when I get down into the red zone, I am going to shift one of the audibles out of the out of the play. So the, the audible that I'm going to shift out of uh, whenever I go down in the red zone is this Jets dig. And the reason why is because the Jets dig is really not a great play for the red zone. Um, the play you want to use in the red zone is this play mesh post. This is the best play for my money in the red zone in this game. And it's mainly because um, if they run man coverage, you're going to have that circle receiver in the back of the end zone, which I did. This guy's running a very interesting style of defense. I mean, it's basically like he wants to blitz his entire entire team at me um that's pretty much his approach uh so i have to kind of be mindful of that i mean he's blitzing a lot of people at me every single play but anyways um so the fourth component of an effective offense is running the ball. So if I was to get super, super simple uh, in this in this video, I would probably take out the play mesh and I would put mesh post in there. And then I would basically have, you know, essentially five plays. I would literally have flood, smash return, halfback base, jets dig, and mesh post. The reason um, that I like to have mesh in there it is one of those plays it's similar to spacing switch it's a constraint theory play it's a play that is very good for whenever they get over aggressive and so i was going to you know i i can use that some um it is very similar to you know everything else that i'm doing but it's very effective because it does force them to essentially have to change their zone drop settings. So that was kind of the primary reason for that. But I think I'm gonna go with just smash return. I think smash return is just a better bang for your buck. And again, whenever you force yourself to simplify, what happens is you have to make hard decisions, but it's honestly better for you in the long run, okay? It's much, much better for you in the long run. Now, defensively in this video, I am running my nickel 335 wide defense. And um, there's a couple of things that I wanna start off out of the gate here sharing with you. Um, and that is this little tip right here so whenever you see the clock running down you can pause the game at the end and what you'll see is that i should get a fresh uh play clock here for me to be able to at least set my personnel up because i already know based on the formation that he's coming out in that's probably likely that he's going to want to run the ball and so i've kind of you know kind of hedged my bet a little bit with that and i'm going to go to immediately set up a run defense for this guy uh, and try to deter him from doing just that but that's a little tip that you can use that i think is actually super super 
super valuable. It saves you having to burn a timeout. Honestly, one thing too, if you're in a situation where you're gonna have to burn a timeout, I would honestly just rather go off sides. Um, again, my approach to defense is I just simply want to make them take field goals as opposed to taking touchdowns. That's literally all I'm trying to accomplish here. So I'm just trying to force my opponent to take a field goal on this drive. That's it. And I feel like if I do that, um, then I'm going to be uh, successful. So uh, anyways, just setting up the run defense here. And as you see right there, of course, comes out, runs the ball right at the rip. I think that was 26 duo. We didn't have everything set up, but we had the majority of what we wanted to do set up. Now on defense, it's very similar to the offense. And so, like I said, if you wanna get any of the guides, they are available in the description of this video. So you can get the bunch guide, you can get the bunch tight end, the, all of that stuff. The Jets playbook broke down. You can also get um, this other other one as well so uh, anyways my opponent is starting off here it looks like another inside zone run and that's the beauty of this so what I do defensively is I have a base coverage that I want to start with my personal opinion um, is that the cover four quarters from the three three five wide is super super effective and so if, if I think they're gonna pass the ball you're gonna see that I'm gonna spend the majority of my um, my defense in a, you know in this kind of style of play right here now I did get a little beat press action over the top there. Perry Nickerson got burned. That's one of the issues with cover four quarters is that for whatever reason, they feel the desire to press. Um, and so if you want to, you can actually, there's some other styles of defenses that you can play with this too. You can kind of uh, piece together a lot of different options. But anyways, as you see right there, we're able to stop the run. But anyways, what I'm getting at is the primary place that I'm gonna start is I'm gonna start with match coverage. Hey, I want to see if you can beat match coverage. If you can beat match coverage, then I'm going to shift into um, zone zone drops, okay? And then I'm going to mix in pressure, and I'm also going to mix in man coverage at the right time. So the five elements of an effective defense is the ability to stop the run, the ability to play match coverage, the ability to play zone drop coverage, the ability to play man coverage, and then the ability to blitz from all of those three coverages that I just described. And so that's kind of the, the starting point for what we're trying to do defensively here. Now here he's in little wide trips. Wide trips is really, really good. Um, it's actually a really underrated offense in my opinion. Uh, let's see what he does here though. And another little beat press action on that left side. So what that tells me is basically I need to switch um, if Mike Evans is always going to be on the left in his offense, which so far that's the case, I'm going to put Jair Alexander over there. Like I said, in the quarters defense, for whatever reason, you get a lot of that little like, it's just really frustrating. There is a way of a workaround to that, and I'm going to talk about that on the next drive, but it's basically to essentially create uh, cover six to to that side of the field. And of course, uh, we're going to go ahead and get that tackle, right? Really lucky, honestly, on our end. Now, this is another little tip, and it's super, super subtle, but it's super, super important. So you see here that I'm not selecting a play. If you look on the right there that says the clock is ticking, it shows that he's you know, clicked his play. I never check my play first whenever I kick off return. The reason why is because if they come out an onside kick this year, it's really, really hard to audible to onside kick recover. And so because of that, you just wanna like take that little extra pause and just essentially wait and if you just wait you're going to be fine okay so that is something that i just wanted to like give you a little free piece of advice from and obviously you know failure is the best teacher in this i mean i have messed that up so so many times so anyways um so back to the the offense so if you notice here he's in a three four style of defense and so i really don't have to be like super super concerned about the linebackers in coverage, I can kind of force the ball into tight windows and things like that. Most people know by now, but whenever you put linebackers on your field as opposed to safeties, they don't play the they don't play the the, the ball as well. Okay, so they're not going to jump things. They're, you're not going to get a lot of interceptions like that. Um, that's that's kind of the element. But this guy's here. It's kind of seeming like what his strategy is defensively is to kind of play all out coverage and then all out pressure. So he's either going to drop eight or he's going to blitz eight. <laughs> it's pretty much like his strategy in a nutshell. So. Uh, anyways, here, we're going to start off, got a little bit of a man coverage read here. And again, you know, as you can see, the, the flood play is just working like a charm. Now, there is one little element to flood. And again, if we talk about simplicity, um, one of the things that if you're not careful, you'll do is the mistake that I will make from time to time as well is you will basically create your counter play within your power play. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll over adjust your power play so much 
that it will it will basically it's like why wouldn't you just run jets dig right why wouldn't you just run jets dig so you saw like i put the running back on a on a little um wheel route right there and it worked but it's like it's not this it's 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 fighting against the counter because the counter play is jets dig where he goes on that route okay so that's just something it's a little bit nick picky but um you know it's the little things that do make a big difference and simplicity is is super super important um and we're really trying to show that in this video so anyways um my red zone play here i also really like flood in the red zone uh this little motion out little hitch right here is normally really really good um and of course I fumbled the ball. Now that was actually kind of a safe bet though. As I stepped up into the pocket right there, I kind of knew. Um, now right here, something like this, I'm gonna try to pop a base run off here, just see, and as you can see right there, most people that run bunch don't really, um, most people that run bunch, they don't really run the ball, okay? And so most people don't even realize how good the base run actually is. We did a video on that earlier today, just talking about the different types of runs that you could do from the bunch, because that is an element of an effective offense is the ability to be able to run the ball. And the base run is actually super, super, super effective. Okay. So that's just something that you really, you know, you don't want to like not do it, um, especially inside the five. Like if you could pop off a run like that, it's an easy, it's an easy touchdown. So that's just something to be aware of. So anyway, jumping back on the defensive side of the ball. So what are we gonna do to stop this? Well, first and foremost, we're gonna try to just put Jair Alexander on that side and just kind of see um, how that goes. We're a little bit shout, uh, a little bit shoddy here on our adjustments. One of the reasons why, and a lot of people ask me this question, they'll say, hey, you know, how do you, how do you adjust so fast on the defensive side of the ball? Well, my my obviously the one of the one of the answers is like repetition. I've just done this so many times, right? But a, another answer is I run the same defense pretty much every play. I've simplified, right? I don't run. Now, I want to qualify that a little bit, and I want to tell you that I don't necessarily um, – I want to qualify that a little bit, and I want to tell you that, you know, it's not like – it's it's not like what you think. Oh, dang, I just got – dotted over the top okay so good job by him and he's got some routes he's got some routes so this is gonna be a good game it's gonna be a good game he's got some routes on quarters i don't know what he's doing there I, I gotta look at the replay but that shouldn't have worked so i don't know what happened on that we just busted coverage again i think i think we i don't know i don't even know what we did but anyways uh let me try to get a stop here on the goal line here just gonna drop a little heavy underneath coverage here with the quarters and a couple yellows um, go get him and that should be should get him how have we not got him yet how have we not got him yet and he had a guy popping wide open um so he's got some beaters for quarters but but back to my point on the adjustments thing for just a moment here as you see again i'm waiting because i don't want to get onside kicked right um whenever you only run a couple plays you know how to instinctively set them up you know you're going to press every play you know you're going to shift your line to the the you know one side or the other side right you know you're going to blitz your user so you can kind of pre-do and just kind of like pre-know okay i'm going to go boom 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 and that helps a lot that helps a ton like you'll notice like when i'm playing my best and if you even watch like pro players when pro players are playing their best in this game it's because they've really done a good job it's because that you you start to notice they start picking their plays faster. They become, they basically, what happens is they, they get in rhythm, right? They get in rhythm. They're picking their plays faster. They're making their adjustments faster. Like that's what happens. And so it's the same kind of scenario in this. So it's the same, it's the same kind of scenario that I'm getting at. And that's why I make it, I'm making such a big push right now um, for people to simplify because when you simplify, it makes everything else work better because you start to be able to play faster. You start to be able to um, read the defense easier because it's the same deep. You're forcing now your opponent to have to do very specific things to stop you. And if he doesn't do that, he's just not going to stop you, right? And even if he does do that, then it becomes a chess match. And um, and you know that's kind of what we're looking at here. So, anyways, it, you have to you have to simplify. It's so 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 critical. 
So anyways, right here, he is now shifted into 335 wide, which is actually interesting. Um, so it tells me he's running the 46 playbook because um, he has 34. Well, it doesn't necessarily tell me that, I guess, but I'm pretty sure he's running the 46 playbook based on what he's been running. But he's running some cover three here, uh, just kind of some vanilla cover three. He's not doing zone drops. That's not what he, he's not doing that. Now, I know that... You know, the flood play or the Jets dig play, I'm sorry, is going to, and that was a bad read by me. Gosh dang it. I mean, it was a good read, but I it was a bad pass lead trajectory, and I ended up throwing a pick, so that sucks. Um, what I was, what I, because he's literally running cover three stock, and so I mean, that's on me. I could have just taken the flat route, and that's where you know, you get a little bit greedy. Um, but he's literally just running uh, cover three stock, so anyways, all that to all that to say. Uh, and there you see, there now Jair Alexander should give me the ball back. And of course he drops the interception, but with Acrobat, he drops an interception. But but my point is he was running cover three. So he was running this play right here. If you look here, um, he ran cover three buzz. And that safety in the yellow zone is who ended up picking me off because he doesn't have zone drops. So um, anyways, that is what it is. Okay, so right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try a little bit of something here. We're gonna go with a little little quarter, little cover two, just to try to, to take that away. As you see right there, it is gonna take it away. He's gonna try to probably force that. And again, another dropped interception from Wet Redmond on that. But that's kind of his move. I'm actually gonna stick here. You know what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to man up see here i actually really like this defense so i've got a, a basically i have no only thing is i don't have any middle coverage which is fine actually good defense wow and we'll take that away and another dropped interception he threw into literally i think there's seven packers over there so what we did right there was basically we we went to cover four quarters um now see like right here this is where you want to dial it up a little bit so uh we're gonna play a little soft squat logic over here on the right we're just gonna try to like scream at him a little bit here he's really only got one read we're gonna take that for six hopefully um heck on it all right that's okay we at least got we at least got the ball back right where we were and we now have an opportunity we really do need a touchdown right here um and the reason why is we are up one possession we're only up by two points um if we can get a touchdown right here that actually be really really critical so what i'm gonna do um i was thinking of going to my my constraint theory play based off what he's been calling and i think i am i'm gonna go to i'm gonna go to smash return um Let's see here. What am I going to do with my running back? Um, I'm going to put my running back on an in route. Let's see. I think this is fine. I think we can just do it like this. Let's just do this. And we will have a touchdown. Yep. There we go. And that's, that's what I was – so that's what I'm getting at. So because they're trying to stop the play flood, he can't really want, run zone drops because flood – I mean, he can run zone drops, but they have to be like 15 yards, right? So if they're doing a decent job of defending flood, which the Tampa 2 would have done a good job of defending flood, right? If that's the case, that means that that deep corner route from smash return, which is a really, really glitchy little route, is going to be wide open. And so we're able to get that, get on the board. Um, this is huge because now what happens is we go up by two possessions. Now, we actually probably scored like a little bit too quick because now he's got about 15 seconds left um you know so that that is what it is but anyways all right so nickel three through five uh we're gonna and we're gonna be facing gun tight again so what we're gonna do we're gonna do this this coverage right here and I didn't get my adjustment off, so I've got to run with him. Yep. Kevin King should take the ball away. Another drop. That's the fifth drop interception. Gun tight is kind of glitch. Gun, gun tight is like, if you're going to face something that is hard to stop with match, I think gun tight is hard to consistently stop with match. Um this is my preferred way to play it. Essentially, it's a cover six logic, uh, and we're just going to kind of try to take little things away like that. He's going to throw it a triple coverage again, 
and we finally are able to pick it off and that's actually huge so we've got some room to run and of course we ran into our own guy oh and i guess we are out of time so that's a decent half though that was a decent half um yeah so far so good um if you want to get if you want to get the guides uh they're in the description if you now again this is this is the one negative to re receiving the ball in the first half is now you have to kick um but if you want to get the guides they are in the description exactly what i'm running here so it, it will break down a little bit more in detail kind of what exactly i'm doing as far as adjustments and things like that and we actually have very um very very deep ebooks most of our guides are you know just really really in depth really really um you know deep so anyways uh gun tight again for my opponent i actually really like this defense that i'm running here um and of course i messed up my so what I'm doing is essentially I'm running cover six, and I've talked a little bit about this before. The two defenses that I like the most, um, the, the two defenses that I like the most from the match coverage is I like cover six and I like cover four. The reason I like cover six is because I think that deep half zones are actually, um, it just depends on like what side of the field you're on. But I actually think that deep half zones actually matter this year. I, I really do think they are, are effective. Um, just because they're kind of safe. You know, they, they kind of they kind of are safer. So, anyways, here on the left side, um, whenever I face two by two like this, um, on that other side, I'll play a you know, I'll, I'll sometimes put a seam flat out there. You'll see that the seam flat does a good job of matching the slant routes. Um, and then as you see here, we should have another opportunity for an interception. Mike Evans is like probably honestly, Mike Evans might be the best receiver in the game because it's like you can never pick him off you can never press him like he he's good <laughs> um he he makes things a little bit more difficult for us and of course with tom brady having hot route master it makes the bucks one of the best teams to use in the game it's just their defense is really really lackluster and brady does have hot route master but he doesn't have gunslinger i'd rather have gunslinger than hot route master personally but anyways all right so we're going to our gun tight defense and we've got missed one adjustment, but we're still pretty good. Yep, take that away. And that's see what I'm saying? Like, this dude literally will catch everything. Like, Mike Evans is a post up poster child. Like, he is so, so effective at that. All right, so pistol bunch tied in for my opponent. Um, let's see here, there, a little crosser right into a zone we pick it off and good defense so right there that's and that's literally i've literally been basically in cover four quarters um mixing in sprinkling in an element of cover six right with a soft squat with a soft squat deep path adjustment that's been pretty much the defense so right here i'm going to go for the home run we haven't shown this yet this is the counter play um this is the cover three bomb and as you can see you run on cue i mean he's been running it all game and so you can't just do that and you know we've waited and waited and waited we played tendencies we played tendencies we knew he was going to be in a cover three we knew that was going to come and so as you saw right there we're able to hit him over the top for a one play touchdown so great uh play call in my personal little opinion here now, when you're in a situation like this right here, I actually like, instead of using the post route this year, um, I really like this motion out hitch in combination. So you'll see right here in the triangle receivers can get wide open in the back of the end zone. I like that as well. So you could you could kind of do one of either. Um, the motion, the, the post routes in the back of the end zone are not as glitchy this year as they've been in years past. Hitches, I think, are a little bit better um for a lot of different reasons so as you can see right there we're able to hit him over the top uh are able to hit him for a two-point conversion and now we're in complete control of the game and now this is where um we're kind of at that point in the game where i will shift a little bit i'll start to make some adjustments as you'll see right here i'm going to shift to this defense the reason why there's multiple reasons why i'm shifting to this defense one of them um is because i really really um you know, I just like my, my odds if I sit because he's so used to match coverage now. 
right? We've we've ingrained in him. He's got to be match. He's got to be match. He's got to be match. And now we're going to run more of less a simple zone drop scheme um, that's really going to make it hard for him. As you see right here, his move is I'm just going to go down and, and run the ball. You know, I'm just going to go down and run the ball. That's going to be my move. So it, it, it is one of those things where, you know, now you've really put him in a position. So like right here, wide trips. So we're running uh, cover two on the right here and on the left side. Didn't quite get all my adjustments off. But that quarter route is going to be open. He's not going to take it. He's going to try to force a little in angled streak uh, right into that cover four. And as you can see right there, we're able to get the pick. And that should probably wrap up the game. I want to thank you for watching this video. And if you want to get the exact offense and defense that I ran in this video, I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, we will see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys to. I don't think we're streaming tonight, uh, but we'll be back streaming on Monday through Thursday. Maybe this guy's going to play this out. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Maybe he is. No, P is going to go ahead and concede. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, new text message membership video this week. So text me. Text me my number is 208-218-6900. Uh, we send out videos every week for that. Thanks for watching, and the guides are in the description.